Jeep here. It's a old realistic SX, SX190 short weight receiver, left band receiver. And uh, it's radio that was put out um, in the 1970s. It's a very stable receiver and sensitivity is very good. That's the sensitivity is really good on these radios. And uh, so just have a look here. You've got your megahertz here. And uh, or you say your part of your band spread is here. For pre selector. Your main VFO. And your uh, S meter. And uh, so yeah, we've got your pre selector. Put it on the band you're trying to tune. And it pre selects, so the sensitivity actually increases on the. Uh, on the band you're trying to uh, listen to. You got your band selector here. It's 11 band band selector. And you have uh, crystal oscillators for 25 and 100 kilohertz. So you can line up your dial. So every long, long uh, line there would be your 100 kilohertz. And uh, in half between that again would be 25. So that's how that would work. And then on this side you have tune. It's your Q multiplier. So you tune. Here reject, select, and off. Um, RF gain, AF gain. Mode selector. So she can do upper side band, lower side band, AM, A and L, and standby, as well as power. So yeah, it was put out by Radio Shack many years ago. And is known as the Realistic SX190. There is a, uh, a realistic AX190 out there, which is an amateur band receiver. And they're also sold under Allied. Allied AX190 and Allied a a SX190. And they're very good, strong receivers. But this one, unfortunately, is doing nothing. Turns on and nobody home nobody home which is a pity so I'm going to see if we can bring some life into this realistic SX190 so this will be the newest repair video for the channel maybe a short series maybe a single video I don't know but we'll see how it goes so no further ado let's get this series running a series of videos for the realistic SX190 shortwave receiver. Guys, right, we're now on the inside of the SX190, and just having a little look around to see if anything's burned up or whatnot. And uh, <clears throat> main boards appear to. Uh, be okay. I've got no uh, service manual schematic to go by on this unit, so uh, <clears throat> you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. <laughs> so we try to figure out what's what. And uh, Yep. Looks a little bit like the uh, DX160 in regards to the board layout sort of thing. But, uh, not even don't look damaged. That's the two crystal oscillators right there. They give you the 25 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz uh, oscillator, oscillating signal in the receiver. But, you don't look burned up here. It's kind of curious. This is the speaker wires here. I've got them disconnected from the uh, from the unit. Somebody put a add-on speaker on the radio a few years ago. And on this, but they've got. Audio going to chassis ground. 
the ground. I don't know. But I'm looking at that. Let me see if I can dig up a service manual somewhere for this thing. But anyways, let's just turn the radio over. And uh, have a look on this side. Nothing, nothing looks damaged. Everything looks okay. For first inspection, this is uh, the main transformer right there. It's got a jumble of wires coming up here. I'll have to take all this apart and see what's what, where's going what, and where's going where. That's a awful length of wire there. That's bare bare wire there. And it's going. Where the hell is that going? Right. Connecting the capacitors, which is going to the standby, external standby. Okay, I don't know what the hell that's all about. <laughs> there was a burn mark or something on the wire there. And we've got more. Oh, what the hell? See, like people's been cutting wire and, and <sighs> loose wire. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that's about. Somebody try modifying it for something. Oh, it's just down here in the corner. Looks like charbroiled wiring. Looks like charbroiled wiring there. Let me get my uh, little screwdriver over there. Some of this wire. Two of those wire appear to be melted together. We've got another one down underneath. Sure. There's a short going on there. So I'm gonna have to find out where them wiring that wire is going. And it looks like it's going to the power switch. So that's either switching AC or DC there to the uh, to the transformer. Exactly sure what it's switching. It was DC or AC. Hmm. Well, I've got some rewiring to do for sure. It here is definitely, uh, definitely not normal. <laughs> Even the screw was rusted. There's been heat building up there for quite a while, and. Uh, yeah, looks like we had a short circuit. Looks like that was a fire could have started there, or might have started there. Yeah, interesting. Looks like we got some wire to replace. Awesome. Anyway, guys, if anybody's got a uh, schematic or service manual for a uh, a realistic SX one ninety. 
I uh, wouldn't mind sharing it with me. I'd like to see it because I've got a repair to do here. <laughs> of sorts. Hey guys. Thanks for watching and look for uh, look for part three as we go ahead and replace some wiring. That's the next thing to do. Well guys, here it is, another day. Another day, another probe. <laughs> uh, I spent some time poking around inside the radio going by the uh, schematic and uh, checking down inside the, BS, the, VF, the, VS, the, little, the VFO. Everything seems to be okay, but the voltage that's coming off of D3, which is supposed to be a 10 volt Zener diode. The voltage coming off that is only like 6. It's almost cut in half the voltage that's supposed to be in there. And I traced the, traced the schematic back and the actual supply voltage for D3 is uh, this resistor down underneath this next to uh, Q22. It's Mark 22 on the board. That one supplies the voltage to the, VF, to the VFO. And if you look close, if you look close, you can see that that resistor is a bit charred. So there's actually less voltage going across that than was supposed to be there. Um, this side of this board is the power supply circuit, while this side of the board is actually the audio amplifier circuit. So, and power supply feeds. The audio amp, of course, the audio amp ain't getting voltage, and how's it supposed to amplify anything? And if the VFO ain't getting voltage it's properly supposed to be getting, then it's, the radio's just not running properly. So, I'm just here now, but uh, Ed just dropped by the, uh, the chat room there. So, we're going to have a chat to Ed, see what he's doing. While well, we're uh, trying to figure this out. And so far, well, we're down to this resistor. I'm going to change out this resistor, see if we can't uh, bring up the voltage a little bit to feed the, uh, the VFO. Uh, it appears to be a power supply issue. The wires down in the corner, down in this corner, still needs to be replaced. I just, right now, I just got them pulled up out of the way off the, off the case altogether. They're not touching anything or anybody or anything, so they're safe enough for now. But it, they are going to be replaced. But uh, so where we are right now is this resistor down there. And uh, I'll show you real quick where that resistor is too. Here's the schematic of the power supply for the actual radio. And this is some of the voltages that I'm getting right now. D13, I'm getting 12.5 volts across it. And uh, D12, I'm getting 12.5. Across the fuse is 12.5, and there is uh, R92. That is the resistor that is giving me problems right now. It's got 12.5 on one side, and it's only 6.9 on the other. So of course, that is uh, the voltage is being drained down a fair bit across that resistor. And Q22 feeds the VF the VFO directly from the emitter. So, I'm going to have to change uh, resistor R, R, R92, put a 22 ohm resistor or 22 ohm resistor back in its place, and see if we can't get the voltage up where it's supposed to be, because uh, that 6.3 volt uh, you see on the emitter of uh, Q22 should be closer to 10 volts than 6.2 where it's sitting there now. So that's rubber two with the realistic SX one ninety. Anyways, I won't uh, bore you too much, but uh, I'll put the actual repair now in the next video. So anyway, guys, keep watching. This is starting to get a little bit interesting. Oh yes, forgot to mention the problem is the problem is the same regardless if it's on the AC power supply or a DC power supply. So it's common to both, so it has to be after 
the actual fuse right here. It's got to be after that, so it's in amongst all this. So it's got to be R92. We'll see. Thank you. 
Interesting find for the audio amplifier to be acting like that. At the factory, uh, the board was printed as one big ground plane going right around the edge of the whole board here. And at the factory, they cut the ground, so it was actually two separate grounds: an AC or a uh, AC ground and DC ground on the on the uh, board. It's kind of odd, but anyway. If I reconnect these two grounds together, I get that vicious blah 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 whatever. Now, if I take this board up off the radio altogether, and I just ground the power supply side, or if I just ground the audio amplifier side to the chassis, she's fine. As soon as I take this board screw back down to these terminals, the audio goes to hell again. It's odd. And then as you just seen there then, the audio is all distorted, crap, it's just like, you know, it's crap. But, you got to remember, this heat sink ain't connected to anything. It's actually live, because that heat sink connects to those transistors down there. To the collector, if I'm not mistaken. So this here is actually live, it's not connected to anything on this board. So, when I turn up the volume, I can only put a heavy distortion going on there. But as soon as I grab hold to this heat sink for those two transistors, the audio goes back to normal again. So, something weird is going on here. I uh, replaced all the capacitors, replaced all the caps in the power supply, replaced all the capacitors in the audio circuit. So all the capacitors here now in the power supply and the audio amplifier are all replaced. Then I was starting to think maybe, okay, maybe there's AC getting in, getting on the ground or something, getting into the board. So, I end up replacing two of the uh, rectifier diodes, which are right here. I replaced those, as well as replaced all these capacitors. Pulled out this wire. I don't even know what that's there for. And uh, seemed to, I seemed to get my receive and everything all came back. But as you tell, it's all distorted until I grab hold to this heat sink. So, swatch, I'll show you again. <laughs> I'll distort it. As soon as I grab hold to this. Office buildings. Here's the 
So, I'm, it, it seems like it's a capacitance being introduced into circuit which helps tame the audio. So I'm starting to think now if I put a ceramic capacitor on this uh, shield, or I should say heat sink, to chassis, well, maybe it may tame the audio. <sighs> Very interesting stuff I got to say. We're getting her back. The S meter is starting. The S meter only works if I grab hold of this. So <laughs> it's uh, definitely something weird going on here with the SX 190.